Hello everyone, hope you're having a fantastic morning, at least I am, and I don't know what to say. So what's this? Why is he uploading in the morning? Why is he sitting down? Why is he uploading on a Saturday? You know what guys, I just thought I'd do something different. You know, I make plenty of videos, oh, they're all super serious, they're well thought out, methodical, I've written a script, I do a bunch of editing. I said, you know, screw all of that for one video. And whenever I'm way too tired to make a real proper video, I thought I'd just sit down and have a chat. So this is gonna be super long, I and I don't wanna make a podcast, and I'm sure a lot of other YouTubers do this, by the way, I do actually, have a cup of coffee. Uh, this is my second one of the day and it's just like 10.30 p.m. So I thought I'd just rant, talk for like half an hour, an hour about some stuff that interests me. It's some interesting topics but not interesting enough to warrant a whole video. So here goes absolutely nothing. I'm gonna add timestamps, there's gonna be topics on the side here. So let's get going. So. I'm gonna talk a little bit about earnings, so earnings that have been, and those upcoming ones. A little bit about the market volatility, uh, the whole Wall Street bets, FOMO, FUD situation, um, my watch list, and then maybe I'll do some questions at the end. So I'll call this co coffee, coffee analysis, CNA, coffee and stocks, I don't know. Let's just get going. By the way, I'm in my studios, I, I'm trying to fool you guys by putting up a painting, but you see, it's the good old studio. Um, so for earnings, Microsoft have reported, uh, blew away expectations, as always, seems to be the perfect tech stock, yet, expectedly, the stock didn't really move. I feel like it's a hugely underappreciated company. They're big in software as a service. Um, they're a big uh, pandemic play and they're big in cloud computing. They blow away expectation. Stocks go up like 1.5%. Uh, stock been in a pattern for a long time. Uh, I guess people are just busy off with some other stocks, but this is a really underappreciated names, and they always come in above expectations, but stock barely moves. It's a huge company, so it takes a lot to move the needle. I get it. Tesla um, came in slightly lower than expected, this is obviously a very hyped company and very well, some will say over-analyzed company. So it doesn't tend to move that much on earnings because everything is pretty much baked in. And Tesla tends to move in strides between earnings on other stuff like news about factories, rumors, uh, numbers out of China, speculations about new products, tweets from Elon it doesn't tend to move that much on earnings. There was a bunch of exciting stuff like the Plaid Model S, upgraded vehicles, uh, progress on factories, big solar installations. The numbers came in soft. Um, of course, still the best quarter ever, best year ever, but it was a little bit disappointing. The stock doesn't actually move that much on earnings because people are so excited, they're just shaking. But people have been looking at the numbers for months they all have an estimate, and Tesla's usually right in the ballpark, usually misses earnings a little bit, but who cares, right? But the upcoming earnings that I'm for sure most bullish on are Amazon and Activision Blizzard. So Activision Blizzard, I think, will have the biggest quarter ever. Uh, World of Warcraft is doing really well, so is Call of Duty. It's the perfect staying home stock. And uh, I think they're gonna just blow expectations out of the water. Amazon, same for Amazon. The holiday season, um, stay at home, uh, stores closing, uh, stimul stimulus checks going right into their Amazon Prime accounts. I think this is the perfect company. Cloud computing, you know, robotics, self-driving, uh, e-commerce, move to cashless. People are staying at home watching streams, Twitch, this is the perfect company. I'm looking forward to a blowout quarter, and I think finally the stock can get a move on because it's been really, really slow lately. A oh, little bit of chocolate. Mm. I know eating on camera is probably like a cardinal sin, but it's gonna be a long video, so. Next up is Wall Street bets and the whole FOMO situation with um, GameStop and some other stocks. Look. 
I don't think this is different from any other trend or fad. Um, it's just a bunch of people jumping into um, hot names, sending them up or down. And look, just like, you know, this is sort of a greater fool's sort of scenario. You know, everyone's just buying something because they want it to go up and hoping that they'll attract other investors and they will jump on so they can get rid of their shares. It's, it's almost sort of a, a, a little scheme going on. And of course, uh, the guys over at Reddit and in um, Discord channels are not kids anymore. They're not gamers, you know, playing World of Warcraft. They are grown men, mostly, some women as well, with a lot of money, and they realize that they can move stocks, especially small ones that have been overshorted or oversold or overbought. And I think most of these plays will end badly, and they're just really, you know, they're trends. They're, they're just another bandwagon. Um, and I just encourage you to not do something just because someone else are, and try to be ahead of these people because, you know, that's how you actually make money. Once you read about it on Reddit or hear about it on the news, it's already too late. So uh, stick to your long-term companies. If they ever get picked up by Reddit, you're in luck. But in general, uh, I think if you, if you try to chase these trends and hot names, you'll always be one step behind the people who are actually making the money. And you want to be ahead of the people on Reddit. And the only way to do that is by doing your own thing because no one can do your thing but you. So no one has my portfolio or some other guys's and you just have to make your own picks and just hope it works out in the end. So, you know, I think browsing on Wall Street bets, posting funny memes, there's nothing wrong about that. And there's a lot of good, great research on Reddit and as um, as Mark Cuban alluded to, it can be a great equalizer because sometimes the establishment has way too much influence over stock prices and they give their bull analyst ratings, which are completely useless. So I would rather read a well thought out analysis in a post on Reddit or listen to um, people in my comment section or on, an, on a Discord channel rather than listening to some analyst ratings. So. There is something to these websites, a lot of value, but I wouldn't jump on these uh, big plays that they're making. I just think it's pure FOMO or pure FUD. Um, so yeah, this video is going to be terrible. I'll never post this. Complete waste of time. So onto my watch list. I only have three companies on my watch list, guys. It's Netflix, you know, just blowing it out of the water right now. The best shows, they've got the most shows, perfect stay-at-home company, and it's not like it's gonna crater once stuff reopens, and they're outspending, outproducing every other entertainment company. Um, they're just firing on all cylinders. Uh, they're, they're making great shows in all categories, um, even documentaries, a lot of good crime, um, a lot of good fiction, obviously, um, you know, uh, real life uh, series like The Crown, you've got fiction like The Queen's Gambit, just doing really, really well now. Square, uh, just a cashless play, I guess. Um, also big in cryptocurrency. The company has really proven itself uh, over the last couple of years as a staple, uh, you know, fintech play. I think it's much more exciting than Visa or MasterCard. Cash App is surging right now. And with Corona, I think people have been pushed into a lot of peer-to-peer -peer economy, peer-to-peer -peer lending, payments. Uh, people don't want to accept cash. Small businesses are desperate for, for, for ways to make things go around. And Square is a great ecosystem that will help uh, small businesses now that they're struggling and will also help them when they struggle to meet the crazy demand that will come when the economy reopens. So they're also big in, in cryptocurrency and I do believe in Bitcoin. Just a company that have been making all the right moves and they're still pretty much just in the US. So I think they've got the world at its feet. It's still a pretty small company, uh, but it's very, very popular amongst young tech investors. Uh, has a bunch of upside, offers great volatility. So 
this is a stock I've been looking at for like three or four years, so should probably invest someday, huh? And last one is CrowdStrike. Um, I think cybersecurity is going to be very important. I made a whole video on this company. Good growth, very simple business model, uh, very important, uh, a very important role to play in in um, in the you know defense against hackers in the future. So I think this um, has a great tailwind behind it. Um, and it seems to be one of the more exciting cybersecurity plays. So yeah, those three companies makes up my watch list. I like to keep it small. I've cut out pretty much every company I've been watching because if I'm not actually considering investing, I don't see any point having it on my watch list. Ooh, that's a good one. So I also thought I'd touch on the recent market volatility. Well, it hasn't been that bad, but we've seen some big turns up and down. And I just think it's, it's, a, it's a result of being in a 12-year bull run and then a huge drop in corona and then a massive uh, bounce back. People are just used to volatility and they're looking for the next exciting play and keeping the returns coming. Uh, people don't accept just a slow moving market and collecting their dividends. They want something exciting to happen. And there's a lot of money being thrown around in, you know, or someday people think Corona is going to take over again. Next day, they think we're going to recover. Uh, people are rotating in, into volatility, into safety, dividend, non-dividend, EV SPACs, Chinese companies. You've got Wall Street bets people shorting Tesla, it's just a crazy time. And it's a very exciting time. And people are looking for volatility, they expect it, they've gotten used to it. And volatility over the years, so we're talking decades and decades, have been increasing almost constantly. So the stock market has become way more volatile than it used to be. And of course, when you have um, algorithms, uh, machine trading, quants and just the um, the arbitrage trading so you know when something happens on the news uh, something gets out a million different traders and computers starts buying or selling based on um, just uh, the information that comes out which creates which just enhances and magnifies the swings in the stock market, just like my hands are magnifying what I'm saying. No, so people have gotten used to it. I think you should get used to it. Um, but of course, who knows if this volatility continues, some investors say, you know what, I'm done. I'm getting into some safer names that might not be making headlines, but they're paying a dividend and they, they, they show some stability. So stuff rotate, but overall, the stock market is more volatile than it used to be. So right at the end, I'm just going to on the fly, after I have another sip of coffee, I'll just go through some comments and questions. I'll just take whatever comes up on my recent comments and I'll just give my thoughts on them. I usually I usually respond to comments, but I thought I would be cool to say st some stuff on camera that is not planned out or, you know, grammatically perfect, right? So one guy commented uh, on my how to deal with a stock market crash said, I sold GME at 155. Feels bad. You know, I think a lot of investors are making their uh, first and really big mistakes these days. And I'm, I'm not flaming anyone, but, you know, those who jump on the GameStop, uh, Neo, uh, Tesla, Wall Street bets kind of place, you know, expect, expect it to go really bad at some points, okay? That's just how it is. And then Sultan of Swing, uh, love your name, uh, keeps giving me questions coming from Germany. It's, tif it's, it's not easy to find a broker in Germany to buy like US ETFs. So he's talking about ARK Invest ETFs. And I know some brokerages in Europe um, don't offer US ETFs or you have to do some sort of qualifications to buy them because of MIFID 2. Um, if you can't find them, you you know, you know could split your money up between some of the top holdings. And sometimes there are ETFs, like European versions of US ETFs that comes along, like there's an S&P 500 index fund 
traded in euros on the European stock market for those who can't buy the SPY or VOO. That's probably not going to happen with ARK because it's 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 uh, it's ARK's invest ETF, so you can't copy them without their permission, I guess. So, you know, take some of the top holdings um, if you want to find an international brokerages brokerage. Uh, they should offer their ETFs, or you know, you're out of luck, I guess. <laughs> so another question on my top ten tips. Uh, what do you think about Dropbox as a growth stock? Well, I'm pretty sure it is a growth stock. Uh, I think it's a small company in cloud computing. I love cloud. It's more of a consumer facing thing. Um, so I guess it's it could be a good niche. I, I don't think like Microsoft and Amazon really offer consumer products like for regular people like you or I. Google does with Google Drive, but it's not the best service. So I think Dropbox is a good play. I hear a lot of people use it, especially to send stuff to each other. So probably a good play without having to, I haven't looked into it that much. So another one, I'm not gonna do too many uh, comments, okay, don't don't be worried. So Senkom N commented on my 10 top, top 10 tips. He wanted to add another tip, tip number 11, Invest in cryptocurrency, give blockchain a, ch a tech a chance, should be a small part of your portfolio. I agree, uh, well, at least it's my, it's my advice, my opinion, that you should hold some Bitcoin, some cryptocurrency. Um, my holdings make up like 5 or 10% of my portfolio, just about 10. That's probably a bit more than m m uh, most people would feel comfortable with, but yes, I think you should definitely give give blockchain a chance. Fourth comment here, I'll just do one more after this one, I think. So uh, this comes from Tadeo Sakini. Great content, man. I wish I can I could handle the market like you. I'm more cautious and definitely have too many little uh, dips uh, uh, of my toes in the water. Might be because I invested, started investing late. I was 33, now I'm 38. Still earning, thanks for what you're doing. I've been following you for a while. So, you know, I don't think I necessarily handle things in the market. I've just decided to, whatever happens, I'm not selling, I'm just buying more. It's a very simple rule to follow. And if you can follow that, you don't have to deal with the market because you've already made a commitment to yourself that no matter what happens, it's not gonna affect me. The stock market always bounces back. So. Yes, I deal with the market very well. I've never sold. Whenever it goes down, I buy. But I think as an investor, you should be serious enough to be able to make rules for yourself and stick to them regardless of what emotions you might be experiencing. Because when the stock market goes down, uh, I get nervous, I get annoyed, I get angry, but I just, uh, I just stick through it really. So thanks for the comments. Uh, last one I do here comes from Tom Shi um, says, I started investing in, in Xterra Energy until I read that they lobby heavily to block the expansion of residential solar installations that they advocate only the types of renewable energy that they can directly profit off. If we are going to make a leap to cleaner and more sustainable carbon neutral, neutral energy, all options must be accessible to consumers and so on. And then he mentions some some alternatives he's gone for. So I had no idea. Um, I'm sure most big energy companies and banks and so on and tech companies lo um, lobby for things we probably wouldn't be all that happy with. Um, this doesn't seem too good, obviously. But, you know, Nextera, you know, of course, uh, everything isn't good and it's uh, like the world's largest renewable energy provider they do a lot of great things they they save us a lot of emissions and they're ranked as one of the greatest companies in the world in terms of what they're doing for society for the environment um, and all sorts of initiatives they have for for uh, consumers and for for employees so uh, didn't know about this I'm sure it's true um, but of course you know, a company has to fight for itself and its own interests. And sometimes that will be at the cost of something else. So, you know, uh, it's good that you are looking closely at companies and digging and, and really thinking through what you want to be invested in, not just in terms of where you think you're going to make money, but what you can actually um, 
feel good about investing in. So props to you. Didn't know about this. Um, probably still holding on to my Nextera stocks though. And one last comment I have to include in this video in particular comes from Thomas Vanderville. Wow, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, on my 2021 stock market portfolio where I talked about my art collection. Who's the artist? Here she is. Her name is Mandy Racine, I think it's pronounced. Follow her on Instagram. Fantastic painter. She does like she, she does like abstract uh, baroque sort of paintings like this one. This one is of Louis the Fourteenth um, coming into Europe. You know, just being a man. Everyone loves him. You know, he's just looking great in there. I've got three works of her. Uh, check her out. Um, yeah, just a really great artist. She's the only one I'm buying art off. So that about wraps it up. This video might be too boring, might be too long, but I'm just going to upload it for the heck of it. Uh, if not, maybe I'll make a second channel and upload it. Don't be too harsh on me. This was without takes, uh, no scripts, no preparations. First time doing this. So cheers. Have a cup of coffee. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, always give me ideas for other videos of what you want me to talk about. Uh, me and my cup, coffee cup here. Hope you enjoyed. Hope I'll see you um, for the week for my real videos uh, with good content, sc script and some proper editing. See ya.